Oh wow, look at that, a, a box with a computer inside, isn't that fun? No? Oh, well, shut up and watch the video anyways, it might, might be funner than you think. M maybe. Hey there, how you doing? I'm TechSweet, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. Uh, another day, another mini PC. This one has been sitting on my to review pile for a while now and it's finally its turn and I'm going to be reviewing it today. Or maybe not reviewing it, I'm checking it out at least. Uh, apparently it has an 11th gen i9 processor in it. And I think this is even the high end model. Yeah, check it out, they sent me the 32 gigabyte model with one terabyte of storage. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Oh, fun fact, I actually have an aunt named Louise. I call her Aunt Wheezy. <laughs> I used to call her that when I was a kid and I just kind of stuck around. I don't know. All right, uh, what do we have in here? It looks like we got an envelope. Oh, do you think there's a love letter in there? Nope, no, just a word paper book. And there's the computer. Oh, it's a big boy. <laughs> it's very wide, but it's actually pretty thin. This reminds me of an Optiplex. <laughs> like, like a lot. <laughs> yeah, this thing is totally like one of those uh, micro Optiplex uh, mini tower things. We'll take a better look at this in a bit. Uh, looks like some more boxes. Yeah, we got a power adapter. Whoa, 120 watts. That's uh, pulling out the big guns there. And we have a SATA hard drive adapter thingy. Uh, so I guess you can add a 2.5 inch drive to this bad girl. And maybe we'll do, uh, well, maybe we'll look inside at the end and see what it's like. And, uh, of course, we get an HDMI cord. Oh, let's get the, um, HDMI cord count up on the screen. <laughs> yep, this is my, uh, 8,753rd HDMI cord. So, uh, but let's take a good look at what we got here. Uh, this is a computer. As you can see, it's a rectangle. We got some uh, ventilation on top, lots of holes on there. And uh, speaking of holes, we have a headphone hole on the front, one USB-C hole, which does support display out, I think, and two USB-A holes and a power button. And around back, we have, what's this? One display port hole, one HDMI hole, and four more USB-A holes, and then two ethernet holes. So you can use this thing for like a networking something and a power plug hole. So yeah, lots of holes and all the holes you could ever need. And it's not ugly. And so yeah, it's not bad. I guess we need to get this thing set up though and fired up. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna do that. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. Let's do the specs thing. I don't remember the specs, so I'm just gonna point to an empty part of the screen, and then later when I go to edit the video, I'll put the specs there. B because you can expect only the best, most professional tech coverage at the TechDweeb channel. Unless I'm feeling lazy. <laughs> then you get this, I guess. Okay, let's uh, set this thing up, and we're back. So um, yeah, I'm all set up here. This is the setup, the computer right there on my desk, plugged into my power bar and HDMI plugged into my display capture. I got a keyboard and a mouse and a controller and a hard drive full of Steam games. I got Windows all set up and here you can see a pretty standard install of Windows 11 Pro on here. There's no uh, custom software or bloatware or anything like that. And uh, I guess I should probably mention that the PC works great, you know, it's it's super quick and, and snappy, no problem using it as a computer or anything. You can browse the web, search for important things, you know, pictures of kitty cats or whatever. Ah, look at that one, <laughs> cute little guy. And here's a 4K video. You know, you won't have any performance issues, no drop frames, or no problems at all. And of course, you can watch your favorite YouTube channel, TechDweeb. <laughs> what? You're not subscribed? What the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> I did a few benchmarks, so I guess I'll show you the results of those. Uh, we got Cinebench R23, and it looks like I got a multi-core score of 10,555, and a single core score of 1,593. And uh, according to my calculations, that's about equivalent to a desktop Ryzen 5 5600 processor. That is freaking awesome. My crystal disk mark results are this. I, I don't know how good that is, but maybe you do. And here's the 3D Mark Time Spy results. Overall score of 793. And these results kind of show that, yeah, it's, it's not going to be amazing at gaming. 
But that's not going to stop us, is it? I'm not going to let some Intel processor with integrated UHD graphics tell me I can't play games. Ah, huh. what would be a good task for this thing? Well, let's start with something easy. Skyrim. Oh, uh, special edition or regular non-special edition is the question. Let's go with regular. Oh, I guess I didn't add my hard drive on Steam. So let's do that now. Oh, so if you didn't know, you can install games on an external hard drive. And then in Steam, you can add that hard drive as a library. And then you can use that hard drive as a library when you go between PCs. So you don't have to download the games every time. So if you didn't know that, then now you know. Oh, crap. I gotta install some stuff. Look, it, it says the Steam Cloud is up to date, but then it gives me the warning. Okay, so it's defaulted to high settings. That sounds good. 720p? <laughs> no, no, no. 1080p or nothing. If you can't run Skyrim at 1080p, then there's no hope for you. Oh, why is there no sound? I gotta, gotta set the HDMI. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? Did I, did I really leave myself on the side of a freaking mountain? I gotta get down there. Oh, I'm just going to jump on that statue. Oh, watch this. Oh, no, no, oh, oh, no. I'm being attacked by fireflies. No. Oh, crap. Am I, am I actually going to die here? Yep, yep, that, that's embarrassing. Uh, the, ga the game is running okay. Oh, look at that. We're getting like 40 FPS. And th this is high settings, 1080p. No problems here. Uh, this might be a problem. Oh man, I got no potions. Oh, no food. No food. Oh crap. I'm dead. This isn't good. All right, a uh, third time's the charm. I'm, I'm not going down there again. Let's uh, let's see if we can find a way down this side of the mountain. I'm totally going to fall, aren't I? <laughs> what the heck? What am I doing? Oh, there I go. <laughs> that, that was weird. Ow. Oh, what is this? A house. Oh, maybe they have some food. Oh, yeah, they got food. Just gonna help myself here. Oh, there's two of them. Uh, can I take this guy's food? No, no, he'll see me. <laughs> oh, potions. I'll take those. I really just want this food. Let's see if I can... Oh, almost got caught there. Well, uh, this place looks uh, cold and boring. What are you saying? Nothing? Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that that's enough Skyrim, I think. We're gonna call it there. Um, I figured a good test would be the most popular game on Steam, CS2. I'm not expecting much. If this was CSGO, then it would be good to go, I think. But CS2 is quite a bit more demanding. Let, let's give it the best chance it can. We're going to go low settings and oh, we got to do it. Performance FSR. Here we go. If it can't run like this, then yeah, it's not going to run good no matter what. Oh God, I suck. Yeah, this isn't going to be good. Uh, uh, nope. <laughs> no, this isn't going to be good. It's actually uh, running okay, though. Oh, there we go. Yeah, man. Take him down. And there I go. Yeah. Uh, look at that. We're getting 40 to 50 FPS. Ow. I need a gun. What's a good gun? I mean, uh, not 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 the best performance in the world, but it's playing. Uh, I bet if this was CSGO, then we'd be getting like 150 FPS. But this is sort of playable. I'm playing the game. Gotcha. Esports champ. No. No. Oh, oh, yeah. Pray and spray that one. Ow. Okay, uh, I think it's pretty clear that I'm the best at this game. Oh, you see that? Yeah, I'm pretty much the best, so no need to... Ow. Uh, no need to finish the game and see the scores. I think we can just assume that I'm going to be the winner of the match, the game, whatever. Okay, a CS2 is okay. Good to know. Ow. Maybe I'm being optimistic here. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is like my go-to PC gaming testing game. So we're going to set the bar low. Low settings, probably 720p is the best we can hope for. So we'll try that. Okay, uh, it's running. Here we go. We'll start counting our frames. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so yeah, hey, uh, not, not bad. This is like 30-ish FPS and the frame time graph is pretty flat. Here we go. Let's murder this bird. Yeah, I think I'm going to say this is actually playable. I don't mind playing like this at all. Come on. Oh god, this mouse sucks. Uh, I mean, it's not the best performance, but you can play like this. I guess this game isn't the most demanding game in the world these days. And if it could barely run at 720p low settings, then you probably won't get anything more demanding than this. But I mean, if you want to play games, you can play games on this PC. There will be lots you can play on here. I, I guess don't buy this for gaming, but if you do get it because you need a powerful mini PC and you want to do like a little gaming, like then older games or easy games, 
games or even demanding games they'll probably run if you lower the settings. This isn't terrible and sometimes not terrible is all you need, you know? I was thinking of doing emulation testing but I changed my mind because I feeling lazy but I also realized that I already did an emulation test on this exact chip the i9-11900H on a different mini PC. So I'm going to link to that video below if you want to check it out. The short version is that GameCube upscaled to 1080p will be no problem, Wii U is no problem, and Nintendo Switch is good. Uh, it looks like PS3 isn't as good, but it's sort of playable. So maybe some PS3 will run fine, but some won't. Oh, and I guess I tested some other games in that video too. So check, check it out if you want to see more game performance on this chip. Uh, for what it's worth, it looks like I got a 9,382 Cinebench score on that PC. So this GMK Tech PC is more powerful. And I do like the form factor of this PC better because it's more like basic and simple. It, more my style. The other one was kind of cheesy looking, kind of all gamery. Uh, both perform pretty close to each other though. And for the teardown, it's it's super simple. You just, yeah, I took the lid off and you can see there that there's a bracket so you can add a 2.5 inch SATA drive. And underneath that is the NVMe SSD and the RAM is under there too. And you can upgrade both of those. So uh, is this thing worth it? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's an i9 mini PC. That's a lot of power packed into a small space, but it's, it's not a gaming PC. It has power, but not gaming power, you know? So if you're buying a high-end mini PC for non-gaming purposes, you probably have a use in mind for it, right? <laughs> I pulled up the price of Optiplexes and like, man, this thing is freaking amazing price compared to an Optiplex. Look, even the lowest end micro Optiplex is way more expensive than this. Look, $670 and that is for an i5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. This thing is an i9. 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So like considering that this is basically the exact same size and form factor as an Optiplex, why would you buy an Optiplex instead of this? Just get this instead. Oh man, that is a freaking awesome name for this video. Uh, buy this instead of an Optiplex or something. I mean, it's a great little PC. It's small, it's thin, it's kind of like professional looking. It doesn't have any cheesy gamer crap or weird designs on it. Just a simple black rectangle. And it's kind of nice. It has lots of IO, lots of holes, lots of USB-A holes, triple display, two ethernet ports, tons of power. If you're buying something like this for like a graphic design computer or something, photo editing, video editing, it, sh it should be no problem, especially since we have lots of RAM on here. Then yeah, I think this will be a great choice for that sort of thing. It's not a gaming PC though. It can play old games, it can play low spec games, some easier emulation, sure. Don't expect to play anything really demanding though. So yeah, if you like this PC, if you think it fits your needs, then check out the link in the description below and tell them TechWeeb sent ya. I mean, I mean, it's Amazon, you can't, <laughs> can't tell them anything. Just go there and buy it there if you want it link below. And that brings us to the end. If you like this video, then um, uh, check out the video of the other mini PC by GMK Tech that I reviewed. That one is a gaming PC. So if you like gaming, you'll probably like that one. I'll put a link on the screen and down there in the description below. And you can go watch it now because we're done. <laughs> I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.